Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza Motorsport 5 with another pre-built silly car. <laughs> this one, we have got a Volkswagen Beetle. Lots of people have uh, wanted to see me have a go with this car, so here it is. I've got it in rather bright blue. I forgot though that the game paints the interior, sort of the metal bits of the interior, the same colour. So it is somewhat loud, somewhat bright inside, <laughs> inside of this car. A little bit, little bit distracting, um, but yeah, I, we can we can we leave? Can we? There we go. Do, do not want to be trapped inside a beetle. That would be a horrible, horrible way to go. Yeah, that's the car. Looks looks suitably silly, <laughs> to be honest. As far as upgrades go, well, the first thing to be changed, of course, is the engine because the standard engine is quite frankly rubbish. Uh, Forty horsepowers, not really much. It is good for 0 to 60 in 25 and a half seconds. Can't reach 100. 76 is that's, that's not very fast. It's a fairly rubbish engine. So, of course, check that away straight away. Pretty good choice of engines for the Beetle. Uh, in, an inline four, a flat four, I'm presuming an Impreza engine that can't go in very many things. Don't see the flat four very often. A 5.7 litre V8, which we do see quite a lot of. But that's not the one that I've gone for. A lot of people would expect me to put a V8 in it, but uh, but no. Because I've gone for the 3.8 litre flat 6. Ignore the fact that it says 3 litre, it's wrong. In fact, it's now a 4 litre. Um, yeah, I've gone for this engine for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's the most powerful one here. The V8 gets just under 800 horsepower. This gets 861. So, more power, more speed, more silliness. Hence why I have gone for, for that one. The other reason is that the flat six is an engine I've never used in Forza 5, as far as I'm aware. I just, I'm trying to think if I've ever had any cause to use a flat six. I don't think it doesn't go in very many vehicles. So I figured I'd give it a go, give something a bit of a di bit different a try, see how it works, really. Um, yeah, that's that's about it for, for the upgrade wise. Of course, kept the vehicle rear wheel drive because it's much more interesting, a little bit boring if you put in four-wheel drive. And to get the more power out of this engine, it is a twin turbocharged one. Otherwise, everything else is just a standard, put every part imaginable on the car. One thing I would like to point out, uh, as much as I would like to uh, <laughs> run it with the, the roof rack, unfortunately, the roof rack is kind of counts as a wing on the game, so I can't have both of them, which is a little bit disappointing. I'll be honest, I would, I would have quite liked to have a, a Beetle with a roof rack doing 200 and whatever miles an hour. But alas, it is it is not allowed. So uh, we need the wing if we're going to stand a chance of keeping this car vaguely under control. Basically, uh, right to to the driving. I'll be honest, not filled with confidence with the Beetle. If we go have a look at the the weight of the car somewhere in here, that, that's the wrong one. I do know what I'm doing, honestly. Uh, we'll do it over here. There we go. Weight, 1,800 pounds, starts off at 2,100. Pretty damn light car. You saw a couple of times back when I used the Maserati. We also had a very light car. The Maserati was designed to be a race vehicle. It was designed to be a race car. It was a successful race car. It had a very advanced chassis. When we put just over 900 horsepower in the car, it was near enough undrivable. This was not designed to be a race car. This was designed to be a sort of a cheap, affordable, everyday transport car that had 40 horsepower. We've got 860 in the Beetle. Yeah, this... Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling the chassis may not quite deal with this. I mean, we've got race brakes and race tyres as per normal with this, but it's still a hell of a lot of power. We had all of that with the Maserati. Uh, I think this might struggle. I think this could be near enough undrivable. Anyway, our test, as with ever, for the silly car build, is to do four laps around the Sebring Club circuit in an attempt to beat a time set by a V8 supercar. The V8 did a 1 minute point 0.8 around here, and i got to try and beat it in a Beetle. Admittedly, quite a fast Beetle. <laughs> okay, please don't kill me. Okay, I know I said I don't like Beetles, but... Just be kind to me. Maybe I will change my opinion. No, that's not that's not likely. But please be nice to me. Otherwise, I definitely won't. <laughs> right into the first quarter. All of the understeer. That is a lot of understeer through turn one. Can we? I'm just short shifting, trying to put the power down. Uh, can we get? Uh, we've got a little bit of power down. Can we go flat around there? No, we can't. That's a lot. <laughs> 
That is some terrible understeer. Oh, we've got to stop though, surprisingly. Okay, Beetle has none of the turning whatsoever. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, high speed, it has absolutely none of the turning. Oh crap, can we get stopped? Yes, indeed we can. Uh, brakes aren't too shabby. I will, I will say that. High speed, no turning. Of course, putting the power down out of these slow corners equates to many wheel spins. Alright, come on. Get going in a vaguely straight line. And then we've got, luckily, the the longish corner, the longest corner we have on this track uh, is a lot lower speed than it would have been if it was Road America. So the Beetle can cope with that a little bit better. Oh god, we've got to do the kink on the straight. We are... Oh, that's horrible around there. On the brakes. Please. Please stop. Thank you. God, dear, dear. There's not... Oh, no. Ah, probably... Might be better to leave it in second around there. Just try and try and control a little bit of the wheel spin. Gotta be careful on the throttle. Uh, I'm gonna let off. And yeah, we can get around there like that. And we're probably not going to stop. No, brakes aren't brakes aren't too terrible. Oh, then we've got a face full of sun while going around a very slidey corner. Come on now. Come on, Beetle. No. Behave yourself. Please behave yourself. Ooh, we need it. <laughs> oh god. Um so, this isn't quite as ridiculous as I thought it might be. We have got quite a bit of understeer going on, and of course power delivery is pretty scary. It's not as scary as the Maserati though. Isn't that this isn't as nice as the Impala, that's for sure. But it's not as scary on the power delivery front as the Maserati was, if I can remember to sort of control it. It's these, there's a couple of high speed corners that are absolutely horrendous. Get on the track, you silly thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, that's actually, considering I had all sorts of problems, we've already done a 1 minute 8.6, this is pretty quick, but it's also pretty terrifying with it. I, I'm, I'm wondering if it's the engine position in the Beetle, oh bloody hell, that is part of the problem with the, with the understeer, having all of the weight over the back of the car is yeah it will cause will cause you understeer that might also be actually that makes sense it must be why it's got okay traction it's not struggling anywhere near as much as the maserati did despite you know a beetle having well what would be a fairly terrible chassis for trying to put this much power through uh oh crap we're not going to stop there we are not going to stop there at all curbs haven't been that big of a problem either with the beetle it's either that or i've been too out of control to actually go near them which is which is quite likely in <laughs> <laughs> in some respects. Okay, we've got one more lap to go and I think we might beat the V8 supercar this time around if I don't understeer wide. Go fighting for control in a straight line, 7.7. .7. We might not make the first corner here though. Oh, we just do. Yeah, I think the, the time set by the V8 supercar might be a fraction easier um, to beat than the Agera's one because the V8 supercar struggles with the straight lines. Uh, oh, it doesn't struggle with them, it's just not as quick as a 800 horsepower Beetle. We're not making that turn whatsoever. Um, well, the Beetle has gone quicker than a V8 supercar. Not the sentence I had hoped to say at the start of this video. I had hoped it would end... Oh, Well, that's that's one way to do things, car. We will, we will just stop you there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not atrocious. It's not the worst I've driven, but it certainly is not the easiest either. We've got high-speed understeer that is, quite frankly, terrifying through some of these corners. Uh, and then, of course, putting the power down in this car is quite difficult. It will snap on you a little bit. It's fairly light, so, yeah, you can you can have it snap on you. It deals with the curbs okay. It, it doesn't have too many problems with the curbs, which is good. It's just, that's where you have real problems. 150 miles an hour, and it's trying to get out of shape. Oh dear, that's bad. Oh, oh dear. Ooh. That's not a way you want to be uh, trying to slow down for turn one on the grass. That could very easily have rolled over if I hadn't got that under control. Okay, so as far as the lap time goes, the Beetle goes quicker than a V8 supercar. I'm slightly disappointed. I'll be honest, I, I'm a little bit disappointed on that. Impressive from the Beetle, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that extra straight line speed really does help around here. 
and my door has just managed to slam shut. Apologies if you hear that in the video. Um, right, on to the speedrun time now to see how quickly the beetle can go in a straight line. It's got quite a lot of power, but I wouldn't have thought the beetle was the most aerodynamical shape ever invented. So I'm going to hazard a guess that at about 215 is not quite as terrible as some of the SUVs and stuff that we've driven. So 215, I think, is a is a fairly good a fairly good speed. And um, or I'll bugger it. I'm already wrong. God damn it! Where's the arrow? Arrow. That's what we want. So the game reckons 218, and when we jump. Dump the arrow off, sorry. 220. Two God damn it. Uh, oh, gears. Shall we adjust you? That looks quite long. Maybe they're a little bit too long for it. If we dump you back that way to 227.4. There we go. Can we get any more out of it? We'll just have a quick, quick little fine tune. Uh, apparently not. About 227 is as good as we are going to get. Uh, can we get to 228 maybe? Mm, no, we're going to go with that then. Okay, we shall apply this setup. We will go for a test drive at Le Mans. There's Le Mans. And right. Now we've got to see how this thing does on. Oh, I've got the fast corners to deal with at the start. Oh, it's not going to like that at all, is it? Hmm. It's also got the bumps. It wasn't too bad over the, over the curb, so I'm hoping it won't be too bad over the bumps here. It's the corners kind of getting to the straight. I might have problem now taking all the arrow off. We're going to have even more understeer from this thing. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, it, we may have a small incident on the way to the straight. I'm hoping not. But uh, ooh, there we go. We are. We're, we're starting. Okay. We are off the line. We're not as uncontrollable. I mean, I'm being very stupid with the throttle there off the line. And it's not as uncontrollable as the Maserati was. Even when I was being ultra careful, or trying to be ultra careful with the Maserati, that thing was, it just wheel span the entire time. Whereas this, okay, sure, if you if you boot it in first and second, it'll spin. But by third, it'll probably have sorted itself out, uh, provided you're not doing anything silly with hills and cambers and we're all out of position there. That's a new place to be. You don't want to be over there. Uh, <laughs> Right, there's a terrible line through there as well. Does anybody realise I don't like Le Mans very much? Very rarely do I drive this track. Apart from for this little bit, for the speed runs with incredibly hard to drive cars, I don't drive Le Mans. Don't like this place at all. Uh, oh dear, we've got understeer there. Uh, we're across the curbs, we're across the curbs, it's fine. <laughs> Just be very, if, if you go out over there and you don't use too much power, you can sometimes run across them. If I booted it while I was there, even if I was, had everything in a straight line, and, and not got wheel spin and stuff, it would just throw the car around on those bumps. Horrible place. Uh, we're up to 215 miles an hour already in a Volkswagen Beetle. Steering is less than responsive at this speed as well. <laughs> That's quite scary. <laughs> um, I'm not looking forward to this corner that is coming up. 225. Can we get the 227? Come on. You can do it. 226. Oh, bugger. Getting a no, we're slightly falling off the road here. 226 to 26. Oh crap, that was some airtime. Ooh, that was, we've got some understeer. I kept it nailed though through the corner. <laughs> Ooh, we got away with that. We were approaching the corner on sort of on our side in the air. And get stopped. Yes, you can. It did make the corner, just about. Ran a little bit wide. But it did it did get around the corner. 226, I think, was the quickest as I got that, but we did wander a little bit on the straight. Yeah, high speeds, this is not very nice to drive. I think primarily because of weight distribution, but that same weight distribution plays a part in making it a little bit easier to drive at low speeds. So, yeah, you, you, you have some benefits, some disadvantages. In the end, this is not as terrible as it could have been. It really isn't. It's still not, a, not an easy car to drive, not a particular... Well, it's not an easy car to drive. I wouldn't say it's not a, a not a, it's not a, not really a nice car to drive, but it's not not the worst. So uh, there we go. A Volkswagen Beetle has gone round the track quicker than a V8 supercar and hit 226 miles an hour, unless it flashed to 27 at a point I didn't quite see. This is, this is entirely possible. So pretty impressive, pretty, pretty impressive for a Volkswagen Beetle. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.